So we already talked about the concept of having canvas widgets and then having sub widgets as well, right? These are widgets that we add to other widgets. This is a widget that we add directly to the screen. If you have missed that, the introductory part of this series goes over all the most important stuff you need to know about that. But now I want to talk a little bit more about different types of sub widgets that we can make because I just did one here with an overlay as an example, and that oftentimes will be the more used type of sub widget that you can make. But it's by far not the only one. And we're going to be talking about a few more later down the line. But I want to talk about some of the more useful ones that we're going to be also using in a bunch of other different examples uh, moving forward. So let's go back to our HUD to talk about the different types of these boxes that we have. And then we'll maybe make some actual sub widgets out of those in a moment as well. The thing that we're going to be talking about will be the horizontal box, which is a box that sorts things horizontally. The vertical box, which I'm sure that you can imagine what the difference between the two of these is. And then we also have the wrap box, which is a little bit less intuitive, but also really, really powerful. So let's add in all three of these to the screen. Now, for these, I'm going to set their anchors to actually align with how big they are on screen because they, as the boxes themselves, will get squished and stretched, but the content inside them doesn't necessarily do the same. Specifically for the wrap box, that is a relevant thing to keep in mind. So I'm just going to align all of these kind of to the corners of their screen positions. And then let's start adding uh, just buttons. We'll talk about buttons a little bit later uh, because that's making your stuff interactable. It's really, really nice. Really, really important, of course. If I just add in a button to this horizontal box, it adds it to the left. Okay, cool. Let's click on the button and see what we have as far as alignment goes. You can see that the alignment is more or less the same as we had when it was part of a overlay over here. We can align this to the uh, left, to the right, but if we align it to the right, it's still sticking to the left. And that's because the horizontal box is the thing that's going to keep things, well, horizontal, right? So it's always going to add in multiple buttons side by side like this, going from left to right. So that's why even when we set this to align to the right, it still sticks to the left because it is aligned to the right of its own slot within this box. Now we can set the size here to fill and that starts telling a slightly different story because now this entire thing is a filling up the space of this horizontal box and it now has more room to it than just its own size. So now it will actually go in between all the different places. If we set both of these to being fill and aligning to certain uh, positions. You can see that even if I now align this back to the right, it doesn't go all the way to the right because both of these now have half the size of this horizontal box to them. So when I align this to the right, it's going to snap to the right of its individual slot, which is half of the entire box size. If I add in yet another button to this, and I set that one also to being filled, now each one of these gets a third of the entire box. And you can see how this very easily and dynamically lets you add things side by side. So for instance, I will make like a fancy button with some text and maybe an image to it in a moment as a sub widget to show you how a horizontal box works. Now then it follows that the vertical box kind of does the same thing uh, just from the top to the bottom. So let's add in three buttons to this vertical box as well. I'm going to set all of these to uh, being fill and then we're going to align these to the center and make them fill their entire uh, horizontal position. And you will note if I increase the size of this, they all just remain with getting one third of the total size of this thing and aligning themselves to the center of that bit. It's because of how we have this alignment set up. If I set this one to the top and this one to the bottom, you'll see that their behavior uh, will do well exactly what we did sell it to do. They still all have one third. This one's always going to stick to the bottom. This one's always going to stick to the top. And this one's always going to stick to the middle of the entire thing. But we can, again, just say, well, actually, I want this to stick to the top of its own segment. 
and then it will do that instead. So these boxes are really, really powerful to do things like making lists. We have a specific list view. If you have a bunch of items that all need to display the same thing, but a vertical box, our horizontal box is a really nice, more simplified way uh, to make things like lists. And the actually wonderful part about horizontal and vertical boxes compared to lists, which again, we're going to be talking about in the future, is that you can add in multiple different types of widgets. So right now we're just doing a bunch of buttons to show things off. But if I want to add in like a text, I can just simply add in a text to this. And now it also has a text in it. And then if I want to add in an image as well, there's nothing to stop me from doing that too. So that works uh, quite well. Moving on to the wrap box, which I think is the next most important thing uh, in this situation. Let's add in just a bunch of images. So we add in an image and we add in another image. It adds it next to each other. Let's actually give both of these a little bit of padding. Well, actually, let's add in a bunch more images uh, first. So we add in one more image. I think we can just like copy paste these as well. Makes it a little bit faster to add in a bunch of them. And you can see that we're starting to add in quite a lot of images here. So if we make all of these uh, render at 100 by 100 instead, you can already see what this wrap box is doing. When there's no more room for an image to go side by side, it just goes to the next row. If I then set the padding for all of them to like five, you can see the difference between uh, their location a little bit better. And if I give it enough room, it automatically adjusts all the wrapping. But if I don't have enough room, it also automatically adjusts the wrapping. So for things like making inventory screens or whatever, these wrap boxes are really quite useful. Because if you want a inventory grid that works in a bunch of different situations displaying your inventory even if like sometimes maybe you want to display your inventory in a three wide grid maybe sometimes in a six wide grid or whatever these red boxes kind of just take care of all that for you you might have noticed though one little thing uh, and this goes for all of these types of boxes but specifically for red boxes this ends up being super useful if I make it too slim, it starts putting them outside of where I want it to be. So we actually don't want to do that because obviously that's a bit of a mess. That's where we can add in a thing called a scroll box. So if you put in a scroll box anywhere in here, and then you put the wrap box or vertical box or horizontal box inside of that scroll box, we now have the scroll box over here, you can see it still works as the wrap box that it should be, but we also get this little scroll wheel, which I can actually show you how that works if I align this uh, kind of a little bit better uh, with the screen again, when we go into play mode. So in play mode here, we can see we have all these buttons and all that kind of stuff from the horizontal and vertical box. And then because we have this uh, wrap box in a scroll box, we can scroll up and down it. But as the screen becomes wider, it automatically adjusts the scroll box or the wrap box rather and allows us to scroll up and down as much as is required to get all of the content out of it. Now, of course, there's nothing to stop you from using scroll boxes with horizontal or vertical boxes either. And you can easily add them back in at a later time if you realize that, oh, actually, I want this to be a scroll box by just right clicking anything and you can wrap it with another widget. So, in this case, I want to wrap it with a scroll box. The scroll box does kind of get rid of the spacing. It just adds in everything on top of each other, as you can see. But now if I make this thing too small, you see, we can start scrolling through it. Same thing here, horizontal box. If we just wrap it with a scroll box, uh, which is right here, and we make it smaller, it doesn't do anything. Uh, why doesn't it do anything? Well, that is because... By default, the scroll box will scroll up to down because that's how you nine times out of 10 are going to scroll through things. So if you just look at the scroll box's detail panels, we can see that orientation, we can set it to horizontal. And now suddenly, if we make the scroll box small enough, it adds in a scroll wheel from left to right as well. There's a bunch of other settings here that I don't really want to go over because most of them are fairly self-explanatory. It's the thickness of the scroll box, whether or not it shows you the scroll bar, even if there's nothing to scroll, all that kind of stuff. 
you can probably figure most of that out for yourself. If you still do want to have distance between all of these buttons, of course, uh, you can add in a little bit of padding uh, to either the left or the right. So let's say to the right, we want to add in just like five units of padding, maybe even like 10 units of padding, and then probably to the left as well. So that is equally on all sides the same. And we can do the same for these things over here. Give them just to the top and the bottom. And we start making widgets that actually kind of look like usable UI in a way, aside from the fact that this is super thin at the moment. So you can imagine how this ends up being super useful. Because if we go in and we make a uh, like WBP, I'll call it special button or something like that. So a special button. I can make this a horizontal box. We'll set this to being desired, as I showed you in the first video of this series. And I want this button to have an image, then a button, and then a bit of text, right? So I can set this to be a image, then I can add in a button, and then I can add in a bit of text after the button. Now, in this case, the button is actually uh, quite small, and that's because it doesn't have any content. So you can add in some content to the button. So another text here, for instance, to make the button a little bit bigger. You can also use other types of widgets to force it to be a certain size. Again, something we'll talk about a little bit more in the future. Uh, but now we have all of this more or less set up, right? So we can keep this aligned to uh, the center maybe make the font size for this a little bit smaller. And now we have our little uh, button that we can set up with our variables if we want to, right? So we can make both of these text blocks uh, into variable. This image by default will already be variable. So now on event construct or pre-construct even, we can set the text box text for both of these and we can set the image for this. So we set brush from texture just promote that to a variable, expose it, and then maybe give these two a better name as well. So this will be the uh, button text, and this will be the end text, badly named, I know. Uh, we just set text on this. You have a direct set text variable or a function. Uh, they do essentially the same thing. It's just generally better habit to get into using functions. Uh, to set variables instead of variables directly because you never know if a function might do more than just setting the variable maybe also like broadcasting a event dispatcher or whatever and if you're doing your own code it's also good to get into the habit of making functions to set variables because then you can easily add on new code that needs to happen always when you set that variable either way uh, we can set both of these texts obviously all uh, need to be variables as well and let's say in this vertical box, let's get rid of these things that we just did now, and we'll add in these special buttons instead. You can see that these special buttons, uh, we can set our texture. We also need to set the variables for these to being exposed, otherwise they're not going to show up. So we can say, well, actually I want this image to be this, and then this is button one with option one. And then I just copy this over and add in like a bunch more of these and I can start like doing button two, option two, and so on and so forth. I think this video is long enough as is. So I think in the next video, we're going to focus on dynamically adding things to this instead, because it's nice to be able to do this all manually in the designer, but the thing where specifically these horizontal and vertical boxes come in really handy is just being able to supply in dynamically added new widgets and the boxes themselves being able to just like put them into like the list. Same with this red box, right? If I wanted to add in like 10 more of these images, it just dynamically adds them onto the end of whatever this red box is wrapping. However, I think that this video uh, is long enough as is. So we're going to leave it here. Remember, Horizontal boxes, vertical boxes, and wrap boxes, they can be really useful to start building out these like combined sub-widgets that you then can start building your actual UI out of at some point down the line. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. 
And a huge thank you to my Cave Big Brain tier supporters, which care more for coding than impulse control, Earl Monserville Erno, my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Mauricio Farias.